Okay, sometimes you have to determine what's the interest rate when you know the present value, the future value, and the number of periods. Now there's different ways to do this. You could solve it with the present value formula using algebra. You could also use the Excel rate function, and I'll illustrate that in a minute. But let's say you want to solve it using discount factors in a table. So we have the table down here, and we have the present value of a dollar. All right, now, one thing I want to do, I'll highlight some of this for us. Now, you know that if you wanted to solve for present value, you would take the future value times the present value of a discount factor. So in this example, we know that the future value is 190,000, and we know that you had eight periods, so eight years. And if you knew the interest rate, you could then go to eight down here in the table and put in the interest rate and then multiply that future value times the discount factor. So let's say it was 5% you would multiply that future value of 190,000 times 0.676839, which is where N8 intersects with 5%, and we would use that factor. And once you multiplied the 190 times that 0.676839, you would calculate the future value. Well, if you think about it, then all we have to do is use algebra to come up with what that discount factor should be. Okay, so let me slide down and I'll show you that I've done that here. We take 119, all right, 119,000 divided by 190,000, and I left off the zeros, right? Because if you wanted to, if, if you knew the future value and the present value, then dividing the present value by the future value would give you the discount factor. That's just algebra. And so what we come up with is a table value of 0.626316. Now, we know it's eight periods into the future because that's given in this problem, but we don't know the interest rate. So we would go to eight and we would look to see if we can find 0.626316. Well, we can't, but we're pretty close here, 0 0.6274. 0 0.65 is too high and 0.58 is too, uh, you know, it's too little of a number. So we know the rate is about 6%. Well, what if you wanted to find it exactly? Well, then you can use extrapolation, and I'll show you how you could do that. Okay, here's what you would do. You would put the table values in. Okay, so you'd say, well, we know the number is between it's 626316. So we know it's between 627412 and 0.582012. So we'll drop those in and then we'll compute the change. Okay, so all I'm doing here is subtracting one number from the other. And then you would put in the lower number and the number that you're in between in the appropriate place, right? 7% was the lower number, we're not there, but we're almost at 6%, and then you would compute the difference there as well, okay? Now that I know the difference between the two, and I know six to seven is 1%, but we went 0 0.044304 to a total of 0 0.045404, what we can do is calculate the percentage of that movement, and I would do that by simply taking the value in G11, you know, how much we moved from the lower number to the number we got, right? The lowest number in the table was 0.582012. We actually came up with 0.62316 that we calculated here, right? I mean, this number is just pulling from right there, okay? And, and that change is 0.044. So if we divide that 0.044304 by 0.0454, the full amount of the percentage, we know on a scale of 0 to 100%, how close we got to the 1%. In this case, we went 0.9759 the distance away between 6 and 7%, right? So 0 0.044 divided by 0 0.045 with all those decimal places is 97% of the way. So what we know is we could then do this calculation where we take F9, which is given right there, the top percent, 
and keep in mind, this is the top percent at the lowest number. So take the lowest number, and again, we're going from 7 to 6%, and then subtract 97% of the distance. Okay, so I'm going to take the 1% as the full distance times the 97%. And what I come up with, if I format this correctly, okay, is 6.02. So that's the actual rate. Now, maybe getting close enough, you could say 6% and we're done, but sometimes you might have to use this uh, extra, extrapolation approach. Now, let me move this out of the way. Slide back here. And I want to show you how you could solve this one with Excel. All right, we know the answer is 6.02, but if you just wanted to do this with Excel, you could type in equal rate, hit the left parenthesis, come up here to the insert function, and I'll slide this over here. And you'd say, well, where's the number of periods? There's eight, there's no payment. The present value is 119,000. The future value, now remember, you have to flip the sign. If we want the present value to, to appear as a cash inflow, we have to assume we're giving up 190,000. And when I'm done, we get an answer of 6.02. So you can see Excel is a, a quick way to do it, but you could also just use the table work backwards. And if it doesn't come out exactly, then you have to use this extrapolation technique. Okay, get that out of the way. And I hope you found that to be helpful.